to take a look at uh, what we had in the <clears throat> budget changes from last time. We added $1,500 to the Recreation Department for education and training expenses. If we go back and look, we already had $2,000 budget in that, and that would increase it to $3,500. So I, I'd like to take the $1,500 back out and just leave it at the $2,000. I think that was my recommendation, and I concur with you. Are there any other comments? Um, I just want to make some general comments. Um, our budget is, see, last year, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Randy, proposed budget was about 39 million. We spent about 41. Correct. Okay. Uh, this budget, and correct me if I'm wrong, is about 49. Correct. Okay. That is a pretty large increase over last year. It's an $8 million increase over last year. The only thing that I want to say, and I'm not trying to start any type of discussion, I just want to make my, my feelings known. Over the last five years, our budget has grown about $20 million. From, and I have great concerns about that. I think that if we continue in the way that we are, that there are going to be some pretty severe repercussions for the taxpayers down the road. And most of you who know me know, know that I'm pretty much a penny pincher anyway. Always have been. And uh, I just think that, uh, that moving from a $41 million budget to a 49 is is a pretty hefty jump. And I just wanted to have that on the record, Nancy. Um, Randy, there are three very large items that are in this budget that are typically not in our budgets. Remind us what those are and the total of that, because I think that makes up the, the bulk of that increase. Okay, the biggest difference between last year's budget and this year's is primarily we're getting federal money, a $3.4 million we got last week or two weeks ago from the, from the federal um, ARP grant that we have to spend for special purposes, such as water, sewer, broadband, and those kind of things. So that was one of the big jumps, was free federal money. Another big jump was the Water Works Administration Building, 1.2 million. That's not typically in the budget, it's a one-time occurrence. 1.2 million for a new Water Works Administration Building. And another huge increase was the implementation of the CVLG Employee Compensation Study. That's about, that's over $2 million of expenses that were not in previous year's budget in totality, but is in this year's budget, along with, uh, you know, 2% COLA for all the employees, 1% longevity increase for the employees, and um, the health benefits went up 25% for the employees, and the county uh, uh, decided to um, absorb that cost and not pass it on to the employees. So those things taken collectively would push the $40 million budget from last year to close to the $49 million budget this year. Clint, the CFO, can you think of any other large ticket items I missed? The rail trails. The rail trails, that's right. Um, at the last meeting, the board wanted to continue the rail trails from the Callaway Country Store to Hamilton. So that added $3.2 million in the um, TSPLOS fund. So you add all these up, and that will get you from the $39 million last year to the $49 million this year. Those few items, mostly. Let me make one more remark, one more comment. And this is, these are my opinions, my opinions only. I hold them, and I'm going to speak them. So. Um, the CVIOG study, I know, and I know where the board is coming from with the discussion we've had about increasing the grades for <coughs> some of our department heads. But it's my feeling that we may be opening a Pandora's box if we do that. Um, we hired CVIOG, which was what, about 125000 I think, 
that I can recall. Was that about, I can't remember, but it was around uh, that amount. It was about 100, over 100,000. Right, they are professionals. They came in with what they thought was right. We accepted that. And now we're gonna go back and tweak it a little bit. And it's just my opinion that, um, I'm, I just think we may be opening Pandora's box. That's all I want to say. One thing that I brought up at our last meeting was a, you know, possibly a full-time employee for the airport. And the more I look into that, I think maybe we should go look back at just the part-time helpers, even if we have two or three people making up one part-time position. I don't know if y'all want to revisit that or not. That's just kind of an idea I had after looking into what's happening at the airport. And, something I'd like to consider for our next meeting. Maybe removing that. Well, I'd like to speak on the department heads. We've already tweaked this study once. When it came to us, we tweaked it then. So I don't think we're opening a Pandora's box because we've already tweaked it before we actually approved it. So we didn't actually approve the actual study that was presented to us. We tweaked it to suit our needs. And in this case, we're tweaking it to make sure that all our department heads would be at the same grade based on the way that we have classified them and the way that we have put our description in there. So I'm not I'm not saying that we won't open the panel on the box. I don't think we will because we've already tweaked it trying to make it fit uh, us after we've paid that money to begin with. And I agree on the airport. I think if we uh, if if the Kia and all that what we've been talking about comes to fruition. I think then we probably need to look at another full time right now. I think we might be okay doing uh, the part time help we have and then come back and take a look at that maybe at a later date if we can get all that going. So I do kind of agree with you on that. All right. Any other comments on the budget? So the next public hearing and the last public hearing will be the next commission meeting on June 15th, in which um, the board will consider this budget for adoption. And if approved, it'll go into effect July 1st. Okay. Thank you. No further comments? <clears throat> All right. The next item on our agenda this evening um, was a financial statement for April of 2021, um, which we've received this and have reviewed. Uh, Mr. Chastain is here. This evening, if we have any discussion or questions for Clint, does anyone have any questions? Is there a motion? I make a motion that we approve the financial statement of April 2021. No, right. Motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? Motion carries. The next item on our agenda this evening. Um, is a bid award, and this is for portions of Mercer Med Community Medical Clinic. Um, and Mr. Dowling, if you'll kind of guide us through the bids that you got. Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners, item number four is, the Board of Commissioners approved a memorandum of understanding during October of last year to assist Mercer Medicine, LLC, in developing, a count, in developing the county's old library into a community medical clinic. The county's contribution to this project in general was to lease the old library to Mercer Med and fund the repairs replacement of the building's roof and HVAC systems. Bid specs and construction documents were prepared, bid out, and evaluated. On the deadline date of May 21st of this year, five bids were received as follows. The low bid was principal construction from West, uh, of, of West Georgia from LaGrange, their low bid was $911,329. That's to renovate the library into a Mercer Medical Clinic for the community of which the county would contribute alternate number one, the roof of 48,000 and alternate number two, the HVAC system for 143,000 for a total contribution of 191,000 of the total 913,000 329 and you can say the high bid was a little over a million dollars the project steering committee has reviewed the submitted bids and has selected the low bidder principal to conduct this renovation project for total bid amount of the nine hundred eleven thousand three hundred twenty nine dollars 
and 150, 150 days to complete the project or about late November of this year. The county's share will be 191,000 for the roof and HVAC systems, and those funds will come from county SPLOS 19 funds as budgeted. The remainder of the project cost of $720,329 will come from donations that the project steering committee has or will receive. The project's architect, Southern A&E, will supervise this project to ensure it is constructed in accordance with the construction plans. Morgan, Mar Morgan Marlowe of the Project Steering Committee is here tonight to answer any questions the board may have, but a, a motion and vote is needed to approve the county's portion of this project so it can proceed on. And Morgan Marlowe is here to answer any questions the board may have. anyone have any questions for Mr. Marlowe? I have one question. Um, Morgan, what is the timeline? Remind me. The so timeline for getting the renovation so completed. We're going to start. We'll start. We'll, uh, plan is to be in by sometime in December. With a soft opening and then a hard opening or a grand opening in January or February. There, there's a little bit of a conflict, not really a conflict, but they're doing the medical school in Columbus too, and they didn't want this clinic to be overshadowed by the opening of that school. That's right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Did the bid come in real high? I'm assuming because the materials and cost, it did. It, it went up a good bit. Um, the MOU called for us to raise about 500,000. We've raised 592,000. Um, and we're in the process of still raising money to get to the end. Thank you. Well, um, Morgan, you and your steering committee have done a good job, and I think it's a great project. I yes, never want anybody to say that. I don't think that it is. I just want to make sure that I have the that we have the assurance that our portion is going to come from Splost, right? Splost out team. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, how short are you of your reaching your the about one hundred sixty five thousand? One hundred sixty five thousand. We are reaching back out to the donors, and we've had a couple of them that said if we were short come back we're looking at grants we're looking at other alternatives to talk to the school system they're looking at contributing some funds as well okay. so if any of you know anybody that wants to contribute <laughs> Randy with the, the cares money that we're getting that 3.4 million dollars could any of that money be used towards uh, this clinic after reviewing the interim rules that were distributed uh, two weeks ago and the various rules that are coming out almost every day and its interpretation, um, the federal cares, the federal ARP money, the, the county received $3.4 million, um, we believe that those funds could be used for this project to improve public health facilities. And that's exactly what this is, a public health facility. So in my estimation of reading these rules, it is pretty clear, not a gray area, pretty clear that these funds, if the board wanted to, could contribute toward this project as a public health facility. So if we took some of these funds that we received from the, the government and put it back into this medical facility, which we all know during the, the pandemic and all that stuff, we really didn't have a medical facility in our county. Now we do have urgent care. We're trying to get this. So this would actually fit right into the bill of why they gave us the money. In my estimation, yes, very clear, very clear. But I know we've already said we do the roof and we do the HVAC because that's what we were going to do right. anyway because it was our building. From SPLOS 2019. From SPLOS 2019. Yes, and I think that should stay in SPLOS 2019. I, I agree wholeheartedly. That should stay in SPLOS 2019. That's what we agreed to do. But uh, if we took some of this CARES money, AR, not a ARP, that's retirement. <laughs> <laughs> which you will be. Which I, which I will be one of those very soon. But we could take some of that money and earmark it uh, to help. I wouldn't say uh, the entire bit, but what if we said we wanted to do 25, give them more 25 percent of that or 50 percent of what they're short? We know the school may give some. Would that be something that we would be able to do? In my opinion, yes. Uh, that's above the 191. Right above them. Uh, above this agenda yeah. item. Yes, I believe that would be a very clear goal to do. I mean, and that would help us get this clinic that we're all pushing for, us, the school, and everybody, a lot closer to getting where we need it to be. 
it would help Morgan out a lot. Yeah. Yes, it, it would. help the people that live here out a lot, too. Oh, tremendously. Yeah, it's a great yeah. project yeah. for the community. It might make the project go quicker, faster, and sooner. That's right. The goal is to get it open as soon as we can. And help Morgan sleep at night. <laughs> Clint, do you concur with that analysis? Yes. Okay. Muddy Bags concurs. So 50% of what is 165 would be what? I teach social studies, I don't teach math. <laughs> <laughs> well, 162, 82. And I'd like, I, I think we should take uh, some of our uh, federal government money and do 50% of what uh, they're short right now would be $82,000. Uh, to help out, try to get this clinic open even sooner. I make that as a motion. Is that, I guess I need to make that as a motion. We're waiting a second. It's in the budget. Is there a second on that motion? Well, I don't know. I mean, we should be able to make it as a motion. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the current motion? Is it just the agenda item or is it to. I would like to say this board would take some of our money and give 50% of. What is short? Okay. Do they okay. need to approve that agenda item? Yes, they need to approve the agenda item as presented okay. and then Come back to that. put in a budget change right. with those bullet points with those, and put in, the, put in there this project right. as a bullet point. So when the board approves the budget next commission meeting, that's part of that budget, part of the budget with change. The, with the changes of the money. That's how I would. That's how I would like it for it to flow. I'm not opposed to providing some money, but I'd like to see the full list of what we're going to do with CARES before we vote on it. And we should have that ready the next for the next meeting. Then I make the motion we approve uh, this bid award right here for our hundred and ninety-one thousand dollars, and we'll come back to the other. I second that. All right. Is there any further discussion or any more questions for Mr. Morgan? Thank you, Morgan. All right, thank you. All right, we Can have a, a motion then, a motion and a second. Okay. All those in favor? Motion carries. <laughs> The next item on our agenda this evening are our uh, project updates and our county manager, Mr. Dowling, uh, will lead us through these updates. Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners, the, the fiscal year is almost over and we're working on next year's budget that begins July 1st. So most of these projects should be well on their way to completion, which they are. Hitting the high points of the projects that are not completed as of yet, number nine, re two replacement ambulances, one has been delivered and the, the other one should be in this week. Number 14, replacement uh, consoles for the 911 center. That, it, that equipment is being installed this th th now, this week. Um, number 18, purchase a road shoulder spreader. Um, the public works di director has located one in Savannah and we are purchasing in the process of purchasing that piece of e hard to find equipment but very needed. Number 24, the Melody Lakes Dam construction project that is uh, going to be completed by the end of this month, by the end of next month, well on its way to be completed after the change order was approved at the last meeting. LOZ Park is being cleaned up on almost on a daily basis by public works crews, parks and rec crews, prison crews, various other crews. So that's being cleaned up for a opening later this year. Number 32, <laughs> installation of um, soccer lots at the soccer complex. That project has started, it should be finished in the next several weeks. Number 30, um, going back a little bit, number 30, the Rosa Trails project. Um, the most current phase the board approved um, has begun today. Saw a lot of heavy equipment being un un offloaded at the country store. So that project is, has started today. And it should be finished maybe a little bit before Christmas to continue the Man of War Railroad Recreation Trail from where it ends behind the Mountain Creek Inn to the Callaway Country Store atop of High Mountain. 
Number 46, renovate, renovate the old library using SPLUS 19 funds. The board approved our portion this evening to keep that project going. Number 47, update the county's land use codes. There's been various meetings between uh, the board of commissioners along with the planning commission to reconcile some of the issues in the unified development code. The next meeting is Thursday at the community center at 430. And other ones will probably follow. Number 51, impact fee study preparation. That's ongoing. A lot of the information is, is being gathered right now. You can see on the pie chart on page seven, 58% of all the projects have been completed. 38% are in progress. And you can see the SPLOS collections, the lost collections this month, the T SPLOS collections, and the single family home building permits. Maze number has not come in yet. And the solid waste tonnage chart. Be more than happy to answer any questions the board may have. Any questions for Mr. Allen? None tonight. Thank you for your update. The next item on our agenda this evening will start our public hearing, so those will start at 7 o'clock. Um, so we'll take a quick recess until 7 o'clock.
You got this paper, baby? Yes. Did you feel like you kind of flipped the venture storm? All right, the next item on our agenda this evening will start our um, public hearings. Um, we have a few public hearings to go through this evening. Uh, what I will do is we will call the public hearing to order. Um, then there will be the reading of the application. The applicant will be allowed to read, um, excuse me, the reading of the application. I will read that and provide you with the physical location um, and the information of the property. Uh, that will be followed by a presentation by the applicant. Um, that will be an untimed application. Uh, presentation. Um, that will in turn be followed by comments by individuals in favor of the application, um, which will be followed by comments by individuals in opposition of the application. Um, individuals making comments in favor or opposition will have a five-minute time limit this evening. Um, your five minutes cannot be passed on to anyone else. That's your five minutes. Um, after those comments are made, uh, there will be a summary, a rebuttal, and or any final comments made by the applicant, which again, this is not a timed process by the applicant. They have an unlimited amount of time. Uh, once they are done, uh, we will close the public hearing and then we'll take action on each matter. Um, so now we'll call our first public hearing to order. Um, this rezoning application is by Linda Camp. The location is 4471 Harris Road, Ellerslie. It is on map 085A, parcel 03A, land lot 155, land district 18. Um, they would like to rezone one acre. Uh, it is currently zoned C4, highway commercial. would like to rezone to R1 single family residential. The present use is open field with garden and fruit trees. Uh, proposed use would be residential to add to existing residential property. Our planning commission recommendation was approval with no conditions and the staff recommendation was also approval with no conditions. Um, Ms. Camp. Well, if we're approved, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, our purpose for rezoning uh, our son lives on a six-tenth of an acre lot that was laid out in 1900, and he recently had some severe septic tank issues, and the best recommendation to solve his problem was to put it on property that he does not own. It's the land that we own that adjoins his. And so your approval would accomplish two really important things. It would make his lot a little bit closer to the two acres that Harris County uh, requires, and it would uh, make it possible for his family to get the septic tank services that they need if it's necessary. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Camp? I'm going to assume that they need to add the land so they can put in longer field lines. Yes, sir. Yeah. I had the same issue several years ago. And it's not been used for commercial property in years. I just never changed the designation and uh, this seemed to be the right time to do that. All right, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals this evening who'd like to speak in favor of this applicant? None. Are there any individuals who'd like to speak in opposition of this applicant? None. Yes, ma'am. Is there any, any further questions? Nope. Um, does anyone have a motion? This is in my district, so I'd like to make the motion that we approve this rezoning application from C4 to R1. And I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? 
Motion carries. <clears throat> Our next public hearing this evening um, is for the applicant of Christopher Nolan. The location is 15142. U.S. Highway 27, Hamilton, on map 058, parcel 049, land lot 121, land district 21. Uh, the acres are 5.36. The current use is a vacant building. Proposed use would be special events facility and outdoor wedding venue. Proposed use permitted, this proposed use is permitted in A1, C1, C4, and Cord with special use permit. The property is currently zoned A1 under special use matrix 135-5 and 149-5. The planning commission recommendation was approval with no commission with no conditions. The staff recommendation was approval with conditions of improvement may require driveway improvements and must be coordinated with GDOT to ensure that they meet GDOT standards standards for which applicants shall provide letters to the county from GDOT to, to confirm whether the proposed improvements would result in modifications to the existing driveway that meet the GDOT standards and that permanent lighting, exterior lighting shall be directed away from all adjoining property and public roads and shall not illuminate a public road directly or <coughs> indirectly with a level of intensity that is deemed to be potentially hazardous to vehicular traffic by GDOT or by Harris County. Mr. Nolan. Yes, sir. Uh, we have a letter from Georgia DOT saying we do not need a diesel lane and that the entrance is um, to their standards and it was good. And the other long condition is we will not face any lights to the highway, so. Okay. And she's a much better talker than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Nolan, for the Nolans? No? How many events do you, do you think you might have in a year? Or of course, I know that might be hard to tell, but. I mean, last year we would have had none, so <laughs> this year I don't, I mean. We don't, we really don't know. We would like to do maybe a wedding a weekend, and that's through season. There's off seasons that you don't have wedding. We may open our doors for like corporate meetings or something like that. Because I know it's kind of a little bit on the curve right there, and it's coming up the, you know, that's one of the roads that we have where you're looking at the mountain, and then you're going up, and, you know, I just didn't know if we were going to have so much traffic coming in and out right there that might end up coming to hinder you. We, um, on, you would, you know, you yeah. we are going to hire off duty to patrol to make sure that people exit, enter the events safely. So we've, we've thought about that. We want to make sure everybody's safe. Any other questions? What time frames are you wanting to have the event? Um, 10 o'clock is the cutoff. So nothing after 10 p.m. Any other questions? Thank you. Are there any individuals this evening who would like to speak in favor of the applicant? None. Any individuals who'd like to speak in opposition? None. Okay. Um, are there any other questions for Mr. Nolan? At this time, we'll close this public hearing and we'll take action. Um, is there a motion? I make the motion that uh, we approve this application with the, since he did already get the letters and all, but going with the staff recommendation, he's already said he'd do the lighting, but I'd like to put that in since he's already said that they're going to do that. So I make the motion that we uh, adopt the staff recommendations in, within that. Both. Both. Okay. I'll all right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Motion carries. The next public hearing that we'll open this evening is for Crystal Poe, um, Magnolia Estate at Blue Springs, LLC. The location is 5929 Georgia Highway 116 Hamilton on map 042, parcel 023, land lots 166 and 167 in land district 20. it's currently 10 acres it's currently residential personal property proposed use of special events facility reception hall and outdoor wedding venue uh, the proposed use is permitted in a1 c1 c4 and cord with special use permit the property is zoned a1 
special use matrix 135-5 and 149-5. Uh, planning commission recommendation was approval with no conditions and staff recommendation was approval with condition that permanent exterior lighting shall be directed away from all adjoining property and public roads and shall not illuminate a public road directly or indirectly with a level of intensity that is deemed to be potentially hazardous to vehicular traffic by DDOT or by Harris County. Ms. Pope. Yes, um, I, I think you pretty much covered it all, but I just wanted to um, say this is my husband Nick and I'm Crystal and we're from originally from LaGrange, Georgia. That's our hometown, which um, we, are ve we were very fortunate to purchase a uh, case in Virginia's home. And we're from LaGrange, so we really understand the Callaway history, and we're so excited to share that. Uh, we've been bringing the home back to life for over two years, and we have given lots of free tours um, to anybody in the community. Um, I'm a former teacher, so I have become a, even more of a Callaway history buff than I used to be, because I used to be a teacher, and we used to always know the history of the Callaways and LaGrange. So we're excited to offer some exclusive wedding opportunities on the property and to be able to entertain and share it. It's one of the most beautiful pieces of property I've ever laid my eyes on. And um, just to kind of quit Kaysen out of one of his books, um, it's such a beautiful place that he would not want to keep it and not share it with everybody else. That's one of the reasons he opened Callaway Gardens is he wanted to offer people to come in from everywhere to see how beautiful of a place that he had. And he always believed that he never owned land, that God put him in charge of land, and his responsibility was to leave it better than he found it. So we're excited for the opportunity. Thank you. Does the board have any questions for Ms. Poe? No. Thank I, you. I see uh, reading here that y'all are only gonna have about four weddings a year on our, the property? Our goal is to have starting off anywhere between four or six. Um, we are going to be about three times higher than the competition in the area because outdoor events are expensive. You have to bring in your tents and your chairs mm -hmm. and your linens and we're going to use um, um, outdoor events out of Columbus. They're going to help us that we've partnered with them to help us. So. Um, just because of the price point, that's going to limit us on how many that we have a year. Um, so, yes, we're looking about four, but I don't want to, in five years, I might decide to do one a month. What about the time frame? What time do you think you'll be um, trying to close? Well, I'm a... Because I know that road, have, when it gets dark on that road, it gets dark on that road. Well, that road's, that road's always busy, and, we, right. and there are some lighting out there, and I actually already um, talked to the... Um, Hamilton police and we're going to hire off duty police officers to manage that traffic in and out. And we, I've also talked to the Callaway Foundation as well. They use um, a third party um, when they when guests stay at the lodge and spa if they have to go off to help do that. So part of my plan is to have some shuttling from the overnight guests from the lodge and spa and also to police officers on duty to help with that. I understand the outdoor wedding venue, the proposed use is special events facility. What, so what other special events would you advertise that you were available to host? Now, if you do a special event facility, that was kind of something that I had to do to, to do an outdoor wedding venue if you were going to have alcohol. So that was one of the stipulations and also that provides some indoor covering. At the time, our market is weddings. Um, if somebody wanted to do something small, I might consider it, but I think for the price point, most businesses, we own a business. I do a Christmas party every year. I've already referred probably 40 people to Callaway Gardens or even Oakhurst or other local areas and said, if you're on a budget and you want to get more for your money, you may want to do that because anytime you do an outdoor wedding event, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but we would just have to see. Our focus is going to be weddings. Are there any other questions for Ms. Poe? Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals this evening that wish to speak in favor of the applicant? If you'll please state your name and address. Yes. Uh, my name is Dolores Quirk. I know they took our address before because you need to actually have a permanent residence in the facility, but our driveway is actually our house. We're permanent resident. I've been Harris County for 40 years. 
Uh, we've lived across from the Poes. We've been there 15 years. They've only been there two. But that place has never been open to the public. And they came in, and it was in disarray and disrepair. And they totally redid it. And it is beautiful. And they've opened it up to all the members in the county. They actually have, their house has a museum where President Roosevelt sat with all of his uh, books and his CIA guys, and they've opened that to residents. But if you look at the map on the venue, they're asking for 10 acres. There are no houses within 150 to 200 acres around that area. Their house sits so far back off of the woods that there's no way that it would disturb anybody. Also, the pasture that they're having their venue, our house would be one of the closest to it. And we fully support them. They have just been great. They are revitalizing the history of the area, and they just want to share it. And there's no other permanent residents except for one, and they are also supporting it. But they're out of town today, and that is the Brazils. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in favor this evening? Is it, is it advocating for the passage with limits? Is that in favor or opposed? Come, come up and we'll hear what you've got to say. You are, are in favor of? I'm in favor of the request with okay. limit supply. Okay. Yeah. If you'll state your name and address. I'm Michael Harris. Um, I have a, a adjacent to the quirks right across from the pose. And uh, we're building a house right there right now. Um, I talked to Nick and Crystal about it and they told me what their goal was. And... Uh, I'm comfortable with their request, but I would like it to be held at the scale they've asked. And um, because it, it essentially is a, a wedding, outdoor wedding, it's kind of like a nightclub event. It's loud with the music and you've got people with alcohol, but I, I respect their desires and value the relationship with them. So um, that, and I polled the neighbors uh, of the, Ten that I spoke to, the only one that I got a clear opposition from was were the Brazil. Well, the Brazil said they didn't want to take a position. The other ten said they were strongly in favor of the limits. I had a couple that said they just didn't want to take a position. And uh, to be to be honest with you, I'm not sure where the quirks stand. I got dual answers from them. So, um, any questions of me? No, sir. Okay. One, well, I do have Sorry. one. We, we do have one question for you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, I didn't get, jump in there quick enough. Okay. I know on your letter it says six events per year is right. what you're asking for, stipulation of no more than. Now, yes. I know the applicant, she did say that, you know, at a point that, you know, she might want to do one per month. That'd be 12. So. Yeah. Um, I feel like they're going to be grouped into spring and fall, and that would become almost like having a nightclub every other weekend out there. So yeah, it was, I would, the people that I represent on that letter all feel like six a year would be a prudent number. So six. Just, right, okay. as a max. Gotcha. Okay, right. thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of this evening? I'm yes. not, well, it's kind of, all right. Uh, Charlie. Charlie Quirk, I'm the horse's husband, and we live across the street, and I'm totally in support of what they're doing. I think they're doing a wonderful thing over there. My concern, it really isn't something that you guys have control over, is the traffic on that road with these semis coming down through here is horrible. I've almost been hit pulling out of my driveway. My concern, I, I just wish somebody would get us a blinking light up there, you know, where the road turns or something, because... I don't want to see somebody killed there, and it's, it's only a matter of time before somebody's going to get hit. Now, that's totally disregarding anything they do. I mean, that, that's where it is right now. And um, I, don't, I guess i got to go to the state for that because, um, hmm. Right. So that, that was my only concern, but I'm, I'm for it. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd, anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of the applicant this evening? Yes, sir. I would like to echo uh, the sentiments. You your name and address. I'm sorry. It's Patrick, William Patrick Calloway. Uh, current address is in Columbus, but Highway 116 works as well. Uh, I think it's 1931, Highway 116. But uh, speaking for the Calloway family, and 
like the Poes a lot. They are actually a great asset to the community. So I want to respect their ability to use their property as they wish. At the same time, uh, my wedding was the last wedding at that property. And my mother, when she left, she leaves early, complained about the music uh, a mile and a half down the road. So I, I don't think it's an accurate statement to say that only people within 150 yards can hear it because the mountain ridge works like an echo chamber and the sound resonates. So six times a year, I support that. I think our whole family and everyone on 116 supports six times, six events a year. But uh, an, an uncapped number of events opens up Pandora's box, as was mentioned earlier. And uh, I think we all want to see Nick and Crystal be able to enjoy their property freely. Like I'm the last person to get up and say, you should have restricted rights on your property, but Highway 116 is a special place. It's a conservation highway. It's a swap priority zone. It's one of six of the highest priority conservation zones in Georgia delineated by the DNR. It's a special place. Uh, loud music at night, drunks, litter, it adds up. So we can tolerate four to six times a year, but one a week, 52 times becomes a nuisance which changes the nature of Highway 116, which is a conservation highway. It's a very special place. It doesn't take you long to get off the interstate and realize that. It's largely undeveloped, uncommercialized, so I support the pose with a cap of six events per year and uh, hope that's adequate, but uh, thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Callaway? None? Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the applicant this evening? None. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition of the applicant this evening? None. Okay. Um, Ms. Poe, do you have any um, other yes. comments yes. to make? Yes, I do. Yeah, you know. I would like to know if we could get Patrick 52 weddings. If we could find the salesman to sell that many weddings a year, I want to find him. Um, I think 52 is a lot, and if we could get that many, that would be, I don't know, that's a, that's a lot of weddings, I agree. Um, first and foremost, I, I am Nick Poe, by the way. I'm Crystal's husband, and, and I just want to make a few statements. First and foremost, this isn't the first business that's ever been ran on this property. Um, for two years, we've done a lot of research and history, uh, you know, looking through the books and have learned a lot. But, you know, when Case and Virginia moved in, um, Kaysen was an entrepreneur. I don't know how many of y'all know the history. I'm sure y'all know probably more than I do, but, um, you know, he had multiple businesses going at one time. So there was a lot of traffic coming in and out of there um, as, you know, the years have passed. But at the end of the day, we are trying to start a business. That's our goal. We want to create a business that is profitable. I think uh, that's, you know, I think anybody who starts a business, that's the way you want it. Um, just to state the facts, uh, you know, it is going to be costly for us to get this thing up and going. And so in order to recoup that investment, I don't know that limiting the amount of weddings that we have per year is going to be, you know, in our favor at all. Um, and so I can understand, you know, we want to be a good neighbor. We are new to the community. And so, you know, we're not trying to ruffle any feathers, but, um, you know, I just don't think putting limitations on uh, the venue is, is going to be right for us. And I know you've got yeah. a lot more prepared yeah. statements yeah. to share. So. Um, I'm well, definitely not going to host a nightclub at my house. Um, that's not my intention intentions. I want a, an exclusive, beautiful, classy wedding. Um, we're going to end everything by 11. So that's definitely not what I want to do. But I do kind of want to paint the picture where our property is. We're about a mile from a library a rec center, uh, Harris County High School, which we hear the band perform time and then off, off slightly. We are just a few miles from Callaway Blue, which is a plant um, that has um, trucks coming in and out. And that's fine, it's two or three miles down the road. And um, I'll kind of, let's see what else. So we're, we're around already a lot of things and we're on a state route. It's a busy road. Um, we're close to Hunter's Pub. We're close to um, downtown Hamilton. So there's a lot of business, Dollar General, gas stations. There's a lot of people that are near us that are making money with their property. So I don't think we would um, abide by that. And then I kind of wanted to talk about 
some people that were listed on a letter without permission in opposition. And um, I, I had a chance to talk to Ken Calloway. Ken Calloway, I love Ken Calloway. Um, he has Callaway Blue. You're, you're taking advantage of Callaway Blue tonight. Um, he has a wonderful plant, a water bottling plant that he runs, and he's very successful. And um, I reached out to thank him for not trying to limit my, our wedding venue. He said, I would never try to limit your wedding venue. Um, I have too much that I'm in charge of over here. And Patrick and I, in the past, he, he, I've always been open and honest about what I wanted to do with the property, with the foundation, and everybody. And, and Patrick and I have even had conversations about weddings, and he may do weddings at the Blue Springs himself um, in the future. So, and then a couple other people that were listed, like um, Patrick's mom, Lisa Wright, that was on the paper. I talked to her, and she said she's not in opposition or trying to limit me. And I actually reached out to the Ida Case and Callaway Foundation today because I was very shocked to see that their name was petitioning this. We bought this property from the Callaway Foundation, and they were honored that we bought it because somebody put in an offer a year earlier that wanted to tear the whole house down. And the house is like a beautiful historical museum. It's wonderful. And, um, and our offer probably wasn't that much different than from the people before, but they said, y'all are the best fit. You're from LaGrange, you know the history, you got the vision. And um, I reached out to them today and talked to them today, and they said they have no opposition, they don't wanna do any limitations, they don't see us as competition. They know that they're gonna benefit from it if we do it. Um, so they didn't, they were listed on a letter and um, several, Mike Patillo didn't want to be on a letter. So a lot of, I just, a lot of people are, are really far away from us and I don't feel like, I feel like this is Michael Harris's wishes to limit it to six. And um, his home, he's not even a full-time resident. He may be one day, but his home is a, over a hundred acres away from where we would have our wedding venue. So, and, and you know, those are just kind of my things. I wouldn't want to be asked, I, you know, having a business degree, it kind of doesn't make sense to start a business and limit yourself to six customers a year, you know. So that, those are just my, my feedback. You want to add anything else? Okay. Does the board have any questions for Ms. Poe or for the Poe's? No questions? Right. Would you, I know you mentioned earlier that, that you might want to go from four to 12. If a limit was put on that you had 12 a year, that would be about what you want. And I'm not saying I'm limitation, but if you do one a year based on your price point, so if the limit was 12, which would be one, one a month, not one a year, one a month, would that be something that y'all would? Then, then again, I, realistically, I was open and honest with my mer narrative. I spent 45 minutes on the phone with Michael Harris. I gave him my rough draft, and I feel like he kind of picked the numbers out of my narrative to try to limit me to that narrative. Um, realistically, I'm busy. We have a su successful business. I'm probably only going to do four. But 10 years from now, 15 years from now, I have a daughter. What if we decide to do one a month? What if we decide to do two a month? I, I personally don't want to be limited on the property that I pay for every single month and that I pay property taxes on. I'm a good person. I'm a good neighbor. I've, I'm, I've just always followed the rules. So, I mean, I'm not going to be a burden to any neighbors. I promise you that. <laughs> Are there any other questions for the post? No? All right. Thank you. This thank, time we'll close the you. public hearing. Yeah, follow up. No, sir. Sorry. Um, is there a motion? I we'll have a question for our question? attorney. Okay. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? And you may not know this answer. I'm a Randy or a Nancy may know. Mm -hmm. When we've done wedding venues, have we ever done a limit on the number of events that they could have? I don't think I've been here. here when y'all have done a wedding venue special use permit this this is the first night of it. i mean i gotta ask you becky you've been here not I've been here you've been here forever okay that was that was just 
I just was wondering if it you know, had before. Let me ask this question as well. All right, so as far as limitations on uh, number of events per year, is that something uh, that can be petitioned at a later time to expand on, or is that something that is... We have to go back through the process to change the conditions. So it's not in concrete, that's it forever, mm -hmm. if we limited that to the same one a month, hypothetically. Right. It could be changed. All right. It would be changed well, if they went, if they went through, through the process, process, process if it were if, approved. If, if the possibility exists. Yes. Yeah. Right. It would just be like, well, if you change residential to commercial, that's not forever. But at the same time, you got to go back through the process to change that. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Is there a motion? Well, as much as I think that we need to protect that road out there and protect the way it looks and protect because I drive it a lot and, and you know most of y'all know I've been here forever uh, I do find it hard for me to sit here to tell somebody what they can and can't do in their business you know it's not my business I, I wouldn't want anybody to come tell me that I can't do what I want to do on my property in my business uh, although I do would hope uh, that they would respect the fact that that to, to uh, a local Harris County person like myself, that's very historical. Uh, my great grandfather actually was FDR's foreman for his farm. My grandfather built some of the chalets. So I, it, it's very important to me. So I would hope that you do respect that, but I, I feel like it would be really, very hard for me to sit there and tell somebody what they can't do. I, I respect it and I love it. And his father worked for I'm sorry, he can't speak right now. Right. So, thank you. I Thank you. As, as much as uh, I think, you know, we got to protect that, it's hard for me to do that. So I make the motion that we approve uh, this application along with the staff recommendations that they have with the exterior lighting and should be direct away from all adjoining properties and public roads, which I don't think that's going to happen anyway. But I, I do make that motion. And as I said, I state that I hope that uh, that, it, that is respected enough for some of us local local yokels or whatever you want to call us i will second that motion um we have a motion and a second um any other comments discussion all those in favor motion carries Thank you. the next public hearing that we'll open this evening is for the applicant of josh carter cbf holding llc the location is Landlot 101, Mill Glen Subdivision, northeast of intersection of Georgia Highway 315 and Mill Glen Way, on map 045, parcel 189, Landlot 48, Land District 19. There is 1.97 acres. Its current use is vacant. The proposed use is climate-controlled storage units. Proposed use permitted in C3 and M1 with special use permit, and in C4 without special use permit, the property is zoned C3 under special use matrix 101. The Planning Commission has recommendations of approval with a 25-foot buffer remain in place on the north side of the property adjacent to the residential area and the lighting be appropriate so that it does not affect the highway or the community. The staff recommendation was approval with conditions um, and Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of your recommendations was removal or eliminate any proposed driveway from Mill Glen Way and relocate to Georgia Highway 315. Correct. Is that still a recommendation or was yes, there? Because we have received a letter from GDOT that there's no possible So according to GDOT, they cannot have an access to correct. 315, okay. Um, so their next re uh, recommendation was to expand proposed five foot Planning buffer to 10 foot wide and assure that it shall consist of vegetation that will reach at least eight feet in height and proposed privacy fence shall be six feet in height. Exterior lighting shall be directed away from all adjoining residential property and public roads, shall not illuminate a public road directly or indirectly with a level of intensity that is deemed to be potentially hazardous to vehicular traffic by GDOT or by Harris County. Fourth recommendation is Cutoff fixtures with shielding shall be used along all perimeters adjacent to or adjoining, adjoining a residential zoning district or development to minimize spillover of lighting, glare, light pollution, and light trespass. And 
lighted parking areas shall use cutoff fixtures with shielding to minimize spillover of lighting, glare, light pollution, and light trespass and shall provide reasonably uniform lighting across parking areas to minimize light dark contrast. Mr. Carter. Yes, sir. If you'd like to share some more information with us. I don't think I can share much more. Okay. Uh, somebody took very good notes the last time we were up here because I mean, what you just said is what we're presenting to the board and we just want to get a special use permit for a piece of property that's already zoned commercial. Okay. Does the board have any questions for Mr. Carter? None. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of the applicant? Yes, sir. I'm in if, if, you'll, if you'll step forward, please, and just state your name and address for us. Yeah, it's... So my name is uh, Tom Carlisle. I'm an adjacent property owner to uh, Mr. Carter's. So I'm not opposed to uh, the storage units per se because it's all about progress, but uh, what I am opposed to is the access that comes into our home. And uh, notice I use the word home. 12 years ago, I retired from the Army. I moved to Harris County for quiet. And you, uh, if you have been out at all on exit 19, Harris County is changing every day. And uh, Mr. Carter, I am definitely not opposed of uh, you moving in here. Uh, but again, the access that comes into our home, our neighborhood, is going to change how all the people behind me live their lives. It is going to radically change what we thought we were getting and what is going to end up happening with the traffic that comes in. It's going to be dangerous. There are people that walk on our roads. There are blind spots. You cannot see the highway from uh, uh, where the proposed uh, uh, entrance is. It's going to be dangerous. And I would just ask you all really to think about, because if you approve this, which is probably a foregone conclusion, frankly, uh, the safety aspect you all are signing up for. So you will take responsibility for that. It's our responsibility to bring these issues to you it's your responsibility to take these, this piece of information and act on it appropriately. Because it is going to be dangerous and it is going to change how all of us live our lives in that little quaint neighborhood. And so uh, I just would ask Mr. Carter, sir, uh, please be a good neighbor and think about how everything is going to change in our little neighborhood and how it affects all these people here. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Yes. Excuse me, I have a question. Yes, Which are you in the first house on the right as you go in, or the where are you? I'm on the first one on the left, 15 Mill Glen. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, any other questions for Mr. Carlisle? Is there anyone else this evening who'd like to speak in favor of the applicant? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. In favor. Yeah, of I'm going to follow what Mr. Carlisle said. I'm not opposed to the storage. And if you could state your name and address yeah. for us. Okay. Please. I just want to clarify why I'm speaking at this portion. Um, so my name is Kathy DeWinter. I'm at 114 Mill Glen Way. I've lived in Harris County over 40 years. Some of you know me. I've lived in Mill Glen Two Subdivision for one year, and I'm here tonight for my two sons, Seth Armstrong and Samuel DeWinter. I know many of you here have spent a lifetime caring for and serving our youth. Mr. Grant, you probably recognize Seth from the high school in, in the hallway, or maybe you know his name uh, as past master counselor of Columbus chapter of DMLA. Mr. Zerner, everybody knows your parents were two of the greatest educators we ever had. Thank you. Dr. Andrews, you may not recognize me. I was one of your elementary school students at Cantala Elementary, and I later became one of your employees at the high school. And Ms. Langston, Mr. Irons, I don't know you as well personally, but I know you are loving parents. So you understand why I'm here. My oldest, Seth, is 15. We often walk our neighborhood in the afternoons like many of our neighbors. It's my opportunity to find out how his day went and hear all about his friends and his interests. And those of you who have dealt with teenagers know what a big deal this is. My youngest is five. He's learning to ride his bike. Unfortunately, our driveway is just a little bit too steep for him, so he's learning on the road in front of our house. Just like Mr. Carlisle pointed out, that's all going to change when we put storage unit entrance off of our one, lane, our one entrance subdivision road. I know the storage units are at the front of our neighborhood, 
but they will attract strangers 24 7 who for some reason or another will make their way down to our driveways and or our two cul-de-sacs to turn around i'm not here to scream out against growth that's why i'm speaking for the favor portion i am here to scream out for controlled growth growth isn't inevitable excuse me growth is inevitable but we must be careful not to introduce commercial enterprises that add risk or take away value we must seek commercial enterprises that can be supported by our current infrastructure mill glen way in its current state cannot support commercial access granting a commercial enterprise entrance from that road introduces risk to the mill glen two residents and takes away the value from our property and what about our school buses Will it be safe to continue school bus districts, excuse me, school district bus services when there is risk of a bus encountering a storage unit customer in that notorious blind spot? Surely the school district will not simply drop my child off at the top of the road on 315, as busy as that is. So I have one child who's only a rising kindergartner, and now I'm facing the possibility that I have to provide transportation to and from school every school day for the next 12 years because of the location of a commercial entrance for this reason Milglin way should be taken off the table in perpetuity for any commercial use or access i do not begrudge cbf holding a return on their investment they bought a commercial property they're entitled to make money on it i understand the zoning goes back to 1993 and to be honest i would much rather have climate controlled storage units than a family dollar However, just because you are the lesser of two devils doesn't mean I want to give you the key to my front door. I went to high school with Josh, the C in CBF holding. I don't want him to lose money. I just want him to maintain a commercial entity separate from my subdivision. I have spoken with GDOT myself. And I understand that when both in state county roads are present, their default is to direct the developer to a county road, which is kind of a losing game for residents and the county. Studies can be done to reduce the speed limit at that point on 315 since it's right at the intersection with Fortson Road anyways. And when you lower that speed limit to 45 miles an hour, the distance between Mill Glen Way and their entrance drastically reduces from 350 feet to 230, I think it was. We haven't pursued any of that. This is not a black and white decision. Just because GDOT said no doesn't mean Harris County has to say yes. So let Mr. Carter and his associates build their storage units. They are very welcoming to suggestions. They listened at the planning commission and offered up lots of green space and an increase in the buffer. They do not seem antagonistic. However, they don't have a design and admitted that frequently at the planning commission. They promised us the moon, but they're committed to nothing. So I ask you as a board, do not write them a blank check. Approve with conditions if you must approve. You can also always table it. Conditions such as shielded lighting to prevent lighting pollution in our neighborhood. Conditions such as increasing the buffer from 5 to 25 feet with the incorporation of greenery. How about another condition preventing 24-7 customer access so that we don't have strangers in our neighborhood at all hours? Most importantly, a condition like forcing CBF holding to figure out an entrance that is not off of Mill Glen Way. To echo Mr. Carlisle, any other vote by this board puts the risk of any injuries at our entrance on your heads and tells us very clearly that the interests of this one business you, outweighed 19 families. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Winter? Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of the applicant this evening? None. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Excuse in me, I'll speak in Yes, sir. I'll also speak in favor just because... If you, um, if you can state your I'm, name. I'm sorry. Address, My name is Matthew DeWinter. I'm Kathy's husband. So I also live at 114 Mill Glen Way. Um, like Kathy said, I'm, I'm also not opposed to business. I'm not opposed to growth. Um, as... Um, Commissioner Andrews stated in her uh, opening convocation that um, the county has to think about today and tomorrow. I understand that. Today, our children have um, buses available, safe buses that can get into and out of our neighborhood without 
a driveway at that point of a blind spot. The reason that they didn't develop that for residential, from what I understand, is because of the access was not suitable because of the way the road is there. Um, I, I actually took a video. Kathy had told me that there was a car parked in about the area where the, uh, the driveway could be. And even though I knew it before I even turned onto that road, I did not see it until I was at the rear bumper of that car. Thank goodness it was absolutely completely off into the grass. If it wasn't, I could have hit it. Um, I think some of you may have seen that video. Um, if not, I have it available. Um, a 25 foot buffer is great, but when you have to enter from Mill Glen Way, what good is a buffer? People that are going to help their friends unload trucks, trailers, or whatever uh, at a storage unit may arrive before them. It's a gated access. They're not going to have access to that. Where are they going to go if they get there first? They're going to come down our street. They're going to park in front of our neighbor's houses. If it is 24-hour access, is that car parked in front of my house, somebody that's here for the storage unit, or are they there for more nefarious purposes? We won't know that. This, kind of, this situation, I think, has been on the news already. So I'm sure that other county uh, departments have maybe been in contact with you all and talked to you about different concerns that they may have that we may not have privy to because we're just citizens. If each, I ask each of you commissioners, if you have any knowledge that it is going to affect our children for 19 families, on how they are able to access schools, whether it be by buses or uh, bus stops. If there has to be a different bus stop that's a long way away from our houses, uh, they, right now they stop at the top of every single driveway. And if that changes for 19 families in our county, in our neighborhood, because of one business, what are we saying? Who are we saying that we support more? I want businesses. I want everybody to make millions of dollars. Pose, the Nolans, I think Pose left. I want everybody to make money doing business. That's the American way. We have to keep our children safe, first and foremost. We cannot restrict access to our public schools to suit a business's entrance, and they just have to find somewhere else. With this, like Kathy mentioned, this was in 1993. I can't imagine that they ever would have thought that a business entrance wouldn't have come off of 315 in 1993. Thank you. Do you want to have any questions for Mr. Dwinder? No? Thank you. Is there anyone who'd like to, else who would like to speak in favor this evening? In favor? I'm Carlos Rodriguez. I'm in 63 Mill Glen Way. Uh, I moved there in 2008. Uh, I'm a retired or a soldier, 30 years, uh, just like Tom. I was the fourth house built there, actually built by Joe Hall. And I saw the community go from, you know, two or three houses to 19. So I've been there a long time. And that entrance of ours has never been safe. What's kept us safe is that the neighbors that are the ones that use it. So we're aware that we got to come in slow. We're aware that when we invite families, like when I have families come over, I tell them always, hey, guys, when you come in, come in slow. Stay on the right-hand lane. Watch for walkers. Watch for kids. And I think to this, to this day, we haven't had an accident because we're very cautious. But we're cautious because our 19 families care and we take it nice and easy. In the Army in 30 years, I moved 23 times. You have to make the assumption big trucks move families. So at any given time, you're going to have a big truck parked right there in the entrance, putting something in storage that's going to create chaos. And it's a time bomb ticking very slowly if we have trucks there. So, please, you know, and again, I am, not con I am not concerned, and I want them to do their business. I just don't want them to use the road to my house as their entrance. I would prefer they do it someplace else further down. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Rodriguez? Would you like to speak in favor of the applicant this evening? I will. Yes, sir. <laughs> Rick Matson, 43 Mill Glen Way. Uh, I... Matson, M-A-T-T-S-O-N. Sure. I emailed you all separately just before the holiday, and I just wanted to follow up on a couple of points here. Um, the, the opinions about safety are evidence-based, okay? 
The study titled Child Pedestrian Injuries on Residential Streets Implication for Traffic Engineering stated in conclusion, modifications in street design and operation by traffic engineers are required to prevent child pedestrian injuries. Quote, society cannot adapt children to traffic. Society has to adapt traffic to children. Any questions? Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the applicant tonight? Is there anyone who'd like to speak in opposition of the applicant tonight? Uh, Joe Hall, 133 Mill Glen Way. <clears throat> uh, basically, uh, to kind of go off, you know, what everyone else was saying that uh, I think everybody else is on, everybody's on the same page is we're not actually opposed to having this business built. The concerns is when you bring, uh, you know, uh, we're not, uh, well, we're in residential, but I'm talking about commercial. When you bring commercial, you know, businesses into residentials, you know, you have a lot of traffic and stuff like that. So our concerns are, you know, with me, it's my grandchildren out riding bikes and stuff like that, you know, and if the road is really dangerous, you know, like I said, there's blind spots and stuff like that throughout the road. Uh, also, you know, being there at the planning board that it's a 24 hour, supposedly is what they actually, uh, what they want to do is a 24 hour, se uh, seven days a week business. So if you've been around storage facilities or anything like that, you know, a lot of people run businesses out of these storage facilities. So you're not necessarily storing stuff in a, a you know, facility, you're running a business. So 24 seven, you could be up there. I, I have, you know, I got several friends that run businesses out of storage facilities in Columbus, Little Debbie's, Snack Cakes, stuff like that. So they're up there many hours of the night loading their trucks, stuff like that. So there's gonna be noise, you know, just constantly and, you know, safety issues with, you know, the trucks driving in the neighborhood you know, they're going to pass the road, they're going to come down and they're going to turn around and the cul-de-sac, which I own the two lots in the cul-de-sac. I've uh, been, uh, been in Harris County 50 years of my life uh, and been in Mill Glen for nine. And again, I'm not opposed to this. You know, I just, I'm opposed to the 24 seven, the entrance being brought in off Mill Glen because people move to Harris County for, I mean, to get a nice, quiet place and you know the raise their children up beautiful school systems you know uh values and morals just like y'all brought up with the pledge of allegiance blessing our precious jesus christ and stuff like that which people have pretty much forgot about and so we try to raise our children you know in that aspect and try to protect them and stuff like that so we hope y'all stand behind us tonight you know and look at us like y'all are parents and you know just look at us and try to protect our children like y'all would do your own about having that overflow of traffic in, uh, you know, bringing in, uh, it's gonna bring in more opportunity for theft and stuff like that. So we just hope y'all consider that. I appreciate y'all's time. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in opposition this evening? My name is Rusty Warner. I'm at 40 Mill Glen Way. I am the second house on the right when you come in. It's Rusty, that's R-U-S-T-I. You. You're welcome. I have a eight-year-old son who loves to play, especially with the neighbors across the street. He does know to look both ways when he's trying to cross the street, but as a child, we don't always remember. Nothing against Mr. Carter wanting to build. I praise him for that. We all wanna make money, but that is a horrible place to try to build a climate control. We already got one storage unit next door. We don't need another one in my opinion. But if you have not went down that road, personally, you do not know the dangers that we already envision every day when our kids are outside playing. I have to remind myself every morning at seven o'clock when I leave for work and every night when I come home at 5.30, it's like a riding a roller coaster coming into our, our intersection. Leaving for school in the mornings to take my kids to school is another horrible thing, trying to get out in the middle of that traffic on 3.15. But I do it because I have to. I don't want any more extra jumbled up when I'm trying to leave at 7.30 to take my kids to school. Because I already know what it's like now and I can only imagine what it's gonna be in two to three months later 
when Mr. Carter has got his property built up. I'm just looking for our safety of our children, and I hope y'all do the same, because it's just not right that we have to, I'm trying to think of the word, worry more about our children when they're outside playing and our grandchildren. Because like our other neighbors have said, we come out here for peace and quiet. We already having problems with everything else that's going on in 315. We don't need extra. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in opposition? Stephen. Hi, I'm Teresa Polk, 35 Mill Glen Way. I'm the second house on the left. My eight-year-old great niece is the one her boy plays with. They were in the same class this year at school. So there, there are kids back and forth across the street in the afternoons. It's the kind of childhood that I had where I could go play and not have to worry. I can't do that anymore. The 24-hour access means we're going to have people driving through all times of the night. Well, just don't, we don't need it. We bought out here, we invested. It's going to lower our property values and it's going to change the safety and security of our families. Now that's up to you. So we hope you support us. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in opposition this evening? Yes, ma'am. My name is Alzady Copeland Greer. Um, and uh, my address is 15220 Georgia Highway 18 in Pine Mountain, Georgia. But I also um, have a property across the street from the, uh, your item number that you guys have already approved, uh, number nine, uh, which is at 15123 Highway 27. Uh, I'm not speaking on that. I know you guys have already approved that. Uh, I'm self-employed, so that's the reason. I think most of the people that came here with me, they're also self-employed. So we were tardy. We were our, it was our intention to speak on that particular item. We were not, fortunately, we were not here and, and able to do that. You already had taken care of that business. Um, but what I'm noticing tonight, um, as the board have looked at, you know, your agenda, that most things uh, are, are similar. People have similar concerns. I'm not sure if you addressed the concerns, uh, the same concerns, uh, because nobody was here. I, I didn't see anybody here that owned property uh, that's adjacent to 15, whatever, on Highway 27. So, uh, my my thing is to to speak to you all tonight, and I'm I'm here in opposition, but not really. Uh, my my concern to you all is that everybody's application should be treated the same. Um, it seems as if I, from what I've seen, people coming in opposition or or. Um, relaying their concerns to you that they're still getting things are getting approved i know that when uh vernon smith came to you all and you know his his situation was treated a little differently if we could please so, just focus on the focus on right right well that that is my focus is what i am saying to you all is that every application should be given the same consideration it should be done fairly and uh, if one person is concerned about, because uh, it this is a residential area, number nine is residential. It seems like all of them are residential, and you should treat each application in every aspect the same. You know, I know there are different conditions, but there are some things that I, I feel like you people are glossing over. Um, but to, to speak to what these other people are saying to you tonight, I didn't get a chance to express uh, my particular issue, but it seems that everybody is saying, you know, 
consider consider the the residents that are there already uh don't always just consider the business or the the revenue as far as the the taxes or whatever and and then on as as far as the business treat them the same also don't just you know say oh we'll give you this and don't give this person that and they're in the same neighborhood i mean it just doesn't make sense so uh but i would like to speak to you i don't know um how it's done i missed the um the the uh appearance of citizens or, or how you your rules so i would like to at a later time speak to uh the commissioner if it's sure, you or whatever I'd love to speak okay to all right thank you thank you is there anyone else who'd like to speak in opposition this evening uh, Josh Ballro, 18 Mill Glen Way. I'm the newest resident and closest to Mr. Carter's proposed business, B-A-L-L-R-O-E. I'll try to keep it brief. We've all said the same thing. I just want to voice my opinion. I am the newest neighbor and the closest affected. Um, just to reiterate, we, you know, the safety of the entrance location, everything like that. For me, um, you know, I am a combat veteran. That is what brought me to Columbus area. I moved from the city of Columbus. The house I bought there, you know, we experienced theft from my personal house. Um, basically, I moved to the county for peace and quiet. I already don't sleep well in the middle of the night. If I hear noise, my dogs hear noise. They're out running. Um, I, I'm grabbing a weapon in my hand. It's just, you know, a peace of mind thing. 25 feet is not enough. For me, that can be seen right into my garage. Um, so I wish you guys just honor some of our some of our respects a little bit here. But I just wanted to make it brief and you know, thank you for any consideration. Are you the first house on the right there? Y yes, ma'am. Okay. I just bought it unknowingly to this being a zoned commercial, and two weeks later, I mean, just to protect our investment here, a 30-year investment, a property value possibly depreciating and a lot of money into the house immediately and then this sign popped up and again my dogs will run around my property i got 360 degrees of privacy that is now getting cleared i'll have noise and light pollution from 315 you know my garage faces mr carter's property right there i keep my door up again i had a motorcycle stolen from my old house and i keep a you know things in my garage i just feel extra protective of and now you know i don't feel safe in my own neighborhood and there's there goes all my privacy okay how close are the uh, is the there's a fence around the other storage units that are already there how close would you say that is to your property the fence the fence is on the property line it's on the property line how far would you say that is from your house as it gets the property line, ang the angle of the property line, it's actually extremely close to my house, my driveway and my parking pad. The edge of the concrete of my parking pad is on the property line. Okay. At the entrance to the house, I have more of a natural buffer there, but it, the, it angles towards my house. So 25 foot from my house is literally 25 foot from where I park my truck at night. And there's a buffer between your house and the other, the fence that's there around the other storage. Yeah, areas. there's a lot more privacy. That place that exists, I don't hear it, I don't see it. It's not 24 seven access. So if my dogs go out at 11 o'clock at night, they don't go barking and chasing up against the fence and make me have to, you know, my heart gets to racing. I don't sleep well throughout the night. They go out at least once in the middle of the night every day. And now if a truck comes clanking by with a 20 foot trailer at three in the morning at their storage unit, I'm going to be peeking through my blinds or with a weapon in my hand on my own property feeling unsafe. So, you know, I had no idea that was coming to the neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in opposition this evening? Good evening. My name is Adela Duncan, 64 Mill Glen Way. So my biggest issue is again, the safety. And I'm not opposed as far as Mr. Carter making money, but the biggest safety is that entrance coming into Mill Glen Way. I mean, we already have a driveway right when you come into the corner. That's our first driveway to get into Mill Glen Way. Why can't they just put another driveway after ours to get in through 315? And as um, 
Kathy had mentioned before, it hasn't even been negotiated. We went, when we can, went to the last meeting, I asked the planning committee, I said, I asked them, plain, who's gonna hold them accountable? Crickets, they did not answer. So my question to you all is, have any of you actually driven physically to our neighborhood to see about that curve and that dip that we're referring to? Multiple times. Okay. Yes. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it because that meant you did your due diligence and you understand what we're up against. Um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Rodriguez, our neighbor, a couple of years ago, just to give you an example, um, he's a car addict. He went and bought his wife a, a Mustang. His wife was about this high, <laughs> this tall, and all I saw one day when I was walking, <laughs> her come across that, and she, you know, it was the first time her driving it, and I literally had to jump over, and I went, Carlos, we gotta teach Alita how to drive that Mustang, because she almost got me on the road and I was walking. And, um, but it's, it, and she understands the, the, you know, the dip and the curve. Like we mentioned, and all my other neighbors have mentioned, people that are coming in for the first time do not understand that. So again, um, I just hope that you are listening to us, that we're not against him making money, and, but just get that driveway on 315, keep it out of our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in opposition this evening? No one? Um, Mr. Carter, if you'd like to yes, sir. have any closing remarks. My first remark would would like to be on the the safety of the neighborhood as far as crime is involved. Um, we plan on putting surveillance cameras up at the beginning of the road to video anybody that comes in and out of that driveway or any out in and out of that county road right there. So that to me that's going to make that neighborhood a safer area. I just feel that if a thief sees a camera and knows that he just got his picture taken, he's not going down there to mess with my neighbor's uh, motorcycle in his garage. Um, so that's, that's one point, the safety. Um, the next thing that, that I heard was that people weren't going to have access into the property due to a gate. And that's not the case. There will be a gate. There will be two gates on that piece of property, but there will be an area to pull in front of the piece of property off the road that people can wait or whatever they need to do. So it's not like we're going to use the county road as a, as a parking lot. We will have an area for people to park outside of the gate. So that's, that's my main points on, the, on those two aspects. And I know Scott's got a few things to add on the My name is Scott Fowler. Hey, I'm one of the. Give me just one second, please. Can, can, Mr. Carter, yes, when do you plan to put the entrance? I, if we could let Scott answer that, okay. he knows more about where the okay. entrance goes. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have some uh, concepts right now. We're working with the EMC engineering, uh, civil engineer to uh, help with any blind spots and keep this entrance as safe as possible. Um, that entrance, I think, we'll have. Uh, uh, if, we, if there was, if we could fit 200 units there, there'd be 20 parking spaces. Uh, those parking spaces will be within our property um, and give adequate room to turn around. Uh, this building will have a storefront, landscaping. Um, you know, we've got several uh, items that we have to address uh, to lower the impact of this facility. Um, I have, all, and I know everyone has voiced about accessing from Georgia Highway 315. Uh, we submitted a letter from the Georgia DOT uh, where they denied us any access to 315. We explored that first. Um, and, and then we brought in uh, EMC engineering, like I said, to lighten the impact and keep that street as safe as possible. Um, you know, so we, we want to, you know, we're Harris County citizens also. We want to keep the impact as low as possible uh, and provide a service to the community in that area. Have you explored um, accessing this property, sharing and access with your neighbor that has storage units? Uh, no, ma'am, we have not. Um, and it also may be very tough with the difference in the topography of the area there. And 
I don't think it's possible either, the way that their storage units back up to the property line. Could I ask Brian a question? Brian, if there, if there were to be a way that you could work, that we could work out another entrance off 315, a driveway, just say a driveway for lack of a better word, that has to be approved by GDOT. Okay. That's what I thought. Any driveway. Any driveway. Any off of 315. Okay. Thank you. So you mentioned 200 units. That's kind of what you're proposing or thinking you can get in there right yes, now? Yes, sir. We are, you know, we're still in the development phase. Um, like I said, we've got EMC Engineering uh, on board now. We can start with some concepts that will be submitted. And, you know, we'll work very closely uh, with you and uh, the road superintendents and everyone to try to lessen the impact. Are you going to have access 24-7 or are you going to put a cap on it at night so nobody's in there, say, after 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock? I mean, I, I have a storage unit that I go to maybe three times a year, if, mm -hmm. if, if that often. Uh, but I tend to not go at night either, uh, you know, but I just didn't know if y'all were planning on putting a cap on it on time and, uh, you know, to, to limit some of the access right there at that area. And I don't know if uh, somebody else may know, I don't know if the storage unit that's already there has a, a cap on theirs either. I don't know if they're The gate the shuts at nine. Yes, sir. Um, that is something we'll be willing to explore. Um, you know, we want to try to keep everybody as happy as we can. Uh, we're not opposed to that. So, and we do have a plan. I know someone said earlier we don't have any a plan or proposal or anything. But I think y'all have a copy of, of one of our proposals for the building, and that's the reason we haven't had a final plan because we're going to, you know, work with our architects and engineers to, 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 to best suit us and the community. Right. You know, what, work what, in progress. What was your name, sir? I'm sorry. I'm Chad Bishop. Chad Bishop. Mm -hmm. I have another question for Brian. Yes, ma'am. Brian, um, I don't know if this is correct or not, but it was one of the um, some of the information that a resident gave to us that says um, that if the speed limit was reduced, there still wouldn't be enough road frontage there for GDOT to approve an entrance from 315. Do you know if that's accurate that or not? There. That would be their standards. But you don't know if that, out. if what they put in this response is accurate. For, I mean, I, I'm not trying to say they're not telling the truth. I just want it from GDOT so we know that we're dealing with. If, if the speed is reduced, usually the turn lane can be reduced, but it takes a little bit. I mean, it's, it's strictly so they have to go through their formulas and see. So no matter what commercial business is placed on that property, GDOT's going to refer them to that county road for their entrance. Is that what you Are there any appeals, maybe you know, Mr. Britt, to GDOT on these kinds of rules and regulations? Any variances that you no, are no, aware no, of? Not, but we can certainly investigate. Now, I noticed this that has 55 miles per hour, which is 350 feet from the nearest road. Basically, they've got 204 foot of frontage. But you also uh, have a lowered to 45 miles per hour to 230 feet, which still they don't meet. Is there a is there another subcategory to that that's below 45 miles an hour to be able to accommodate a entrance off of 315 and get it out of a a residential area? Do we know of any be below 45? Uh, at 35, I don't know. I mean, you're talking about. Well, it, but it's right there on the right. But it's right there at the at the stop sign. Yes, yeah, at the stop sign. It's right there at the in, ingress ingress. I mean, you've got a yield stop right there, anyways. So you've got to slow down. So you're not going to be doing 55 miles an hour. You're not going to be doing 45 miles an hour. So with that being that close to the intersection of 315 Forts and what I wanted to know is, can we find out information to see if there's a subcategory below 45 miles an hour. I don't believe there is, Bobby. Uh, we actually had, we ran into this problem doing Elderton Park, and the only way we were able to keep the entrance that we have is because it was an existing driveway. And that was because it was in that 35 miles an hour zone. It was an existing driveway that was there. A proposal to do one that would not allow us to do it. I, I know I'm not supposed to speak. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, we can't have any comments right now. The, That's not true. The, um, this has been zoned commercial since 1993. I wonder if the GDOT rules have changed since then. They have. And perhaps whatever the rule was in 1993, they could grandfather us in. I just, I'm not against the storage units at all. I just think it is a terrible, terrible place to have an entrance off of that county road, the way that that road is designed. Um, and I do think that it's, it's just a terrible place to put an entrance to a business right there because of that road. It's just. And I kind of have to agree with that because, I mean, the residential entrance there, I mean, with the school buses coming in now and, and with the kids, you know, that's that's a hard that's a hard press for, you know, the community to have to absorb as well. Is there a way that we can reach out to GDOT to try to figure out if there's something lower than 45? Try to figure out if there's a subcategory below that? Or some other solution. There's got to be a, a different solution than, you know, impeding a, you know, a neighborhood. Well, if we did that, we would, you would not want to make a decision table this it. tonight. Then yeah. you could have a table. I mean, I'm just saying, so yeah, yeah. if you're going to, you know, you either got to make a decision or you would have to, if you want to do, that's what you'd have to do. Table. Right. That's kind of what I was getting. What is your timeline? If this were approved, what would be your timeline? Well, we would start in the permitting phase. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, open as soon as possible. Two months. Mm -hmm. That might soon. be a little aggressive. Like yeah, two months might be a little aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, I would say about a year. Do it in two months, but th there's something that I want to touch on, and I understand the concern. We have storage units now. Um, 25 units, we get five to seven vehicles a week that go in that gate. So we're not, it, the traffic is not like a family dollar or, or like something that, that you're going to see traffic in and out of constantly. It's just not. Yeah, I understand that. I um, just, and I, I would hate to have a, will, the visibility will improve tremendously when you remove those trees because a lot of the problem is once you get over that little rise, you see trees right there and you can't see the rest of the road. That's not true. Well, it's just a shame that that that's where we are. But I just I rode in and out there several times. And I just think it's Brian, a terrible interest. Yes. Because this is storage units, we're having to do this as a special use permit, correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So is there a numerous number of other businesses that could go in there that they could put in there without having to go through this process? Yes, sir. But in the same case, it'd still be the same. GDOT would still control whether they have the interest or not. Correct. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's our dilemma is right. that they don't need a special use to do this whole list of commercial and put that interest right there. So give, give us some quick examples of, of something that could go in this property, C3, commercial wise, so like a family dollar, gas yeah, station, yes. bank, auto, um, you asked me, Brian? Liquor store. Mm -hmm. Back of store. Restaurant. <laughs> Here's the list. So off the top of your head, a, a dollar general could go in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which and would create a lot more off. traffic. Restaurant. It could go in right now without any special use permit. Anything, yeah. Which would create a lot more traffic yeah. in it's theory. What on so in my research, I found out that in our area, people who have storage units typically visit them once every other month. So six times a year. So if you're looking at 200 units. I mean, we equate it to an attic. You know what you're doing is storing your attic stuff somewhere else. How often do you go in your attic in a house? You know, I don't go in my attic twice a year, maybe. And it's 50 foot from me. Well, I'm going to share a very boring story with all of you. I was in Knoxville for four days. And because I knew this was coming up, and this is literally a stone's throw from my house, you're probably, if you walk in my backyard, you're less than a quarter of a mile to where you're, you want to locate as the crow flies. Um, so while I was in Knoxville, 
and we all know Knox is a pretty big town. I just noticed all the climate control storage buildings that were there. And we were in, out, around Knoxville for four days, all during the day. And I, the most cars that I saw in a parking lot at any one time was three. So, I mean, and, and we're talking Knoxville, which is, I mean, there are apartments, that, that's what we were there looking at, but there are apartments everywhere um, that use these storage places, but I did notice it, and I made it a point to notice because I was curious about it. And, I, and I, the most I counted in any one parking lot was three at any one time. Any other questions for Mr. Carter or his group? Going back to you, Bobby, is that what you want to do? See about that, or do you want to go ahead? I would like to actually see if there's another subcategory below 45 miles an hour. Actually, I would. So, to me, that would make a motion to table this until we had further information. Yes. Okay. No other questions for Mr. Carter? All right. Thank you all. All right, at this time, we will close the public hearing and take action. Can I, can I no, sir, I'm sorry, the public hearing. No, sir, that's absolutely correct, so if you place it down. Yes, sir, and I stated that before the meeting. So. One business is more important than 19 families having bus access. No, not at all. Not at all. I'm not sure exactly what the time frame is for him to be able to, Brian, is that something? We can go back and try to figure out or try to. Um, Stanford Taylor's already told me that there was no way to, that there was no way to fit a driveway there. It, do, it doesn't look like, just to me, and I'm certainly no expert, that there's enough space to do that. Correct. And there's that's not what GDOT is online. You can look at the manual with yourself. I'll give you the link. Ma'am. Stanford Taylor called me. Between since the last meeting's happened. Who is Mr. Taylor again? Mr. Taylor is the traffic analyst for G -Dot. Uh, Okay. And I understand that some of these people in here called him. He called me, wanted to know why was he getting all this interaction. I said because it came before the planning commission that the night before, and he stated that there really wasn't another way because there wasn't enough room there. <clears throat> But now yeah, he stated that there really wasn't another way because he didn't want to deal with it, and he's waiting to see what we're going to do. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. I mean, so, because uh, you know, I drove in that I drove in there well several times the last couple of weeks, and I drove in there again today, and it is bad. And I do agree if they cut down the trees and all, it's going to make the you know uh, the vision better and all that. But it does seem to be tough to come in off that road right there instead of coming off 315 or either. Uh, checking to see if you could do a shared driveway like you were talking about. I think we need to do our due diligence. I mean, I think we owe that to the families. I think we need to, we owe that even to, you know, the developer here. So I would like, what is our, what is our time frame to be able to table this? Is this a two week? Is this a? What's the next meeting? What's the next meeting? Yeah. So it's the 15. Two weeks. So it gives us two weeks. I think that gives us enough time to do our due diligence to be able to figure out exactly and that we're covering all the bases. If there are any other options. Yes. But now understand, if it comes back, there's no other option. <coughs> Agreed. There's no other option. Agreed. But I think we owe it to do the due diligence on it. So June 15th. June 15th, table. So we have a motion to table until June 15th? Yes, I made a motion to table this until June 15th to do the due diligence to see if there's anything subcategory below 45 miles an hour to allow the 204 foot frontage to make it a separate entrance outside of the Mill Glen entrance. All right, is there a second? Second. And all those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. So Do that we have another opportunity is like the, to speak no, on the no, sir. No, sir. We'll be glad to speak with you afterwards. You can speak with us individually. Thank you. Well, that was the last item on our agenda this evening. Mr. County Attorney, you don't have any business for us, do you?
people, people, please, please step outside if you'd like to speak. Um, Mr. Britt, did you have any other information for us this evening? Sir, if, if you could please just let us get through the meeting and we'll interact with you afterwards. No, sir. I don't have Nothing else. Okay, perfect. Does anyone have a need for executive session this evening? Nope. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make the motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Motion carries. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to.